All right, there's another tuner on the market. Let's try it out. So as a lot of you guys probably already know, Slate Digital recently came out with a new tuning plugin. It's called Metatune and it's been getting a lot of hype and it does seem to have some pretty interesting features like the built-in doubler and grouped instances. And it's supposed to be good for more subtle tuning, but then it also has some features that look like they're gonna be good for more intense tuning jobs. So stuff like the negative speed and the note stabilizer controls that allow you to go a lot harder if you want like a more affected tuning job done. And before we get started, I just wanted to say that today's video is in collaboration with my friends at Produce Like a Pro, and they're currently running a giveaway. So they're giving away three year-long subscriptions to Slate Digital's All Access Pass. So I will put a link to that giveaway in the description below if you want to check that out. And then I'm also going to be linking in the description to any artists that I use today as an example. This session that I have open here, this is a song called Sheets. It's by my friend Evan, so I will link to her in the description. I've actually been using her stuff a lot lately for examples on my channel. She's given me like carte blanche to use anything that we're working on as examples for my YouTube, even if it's, you know, in the initial stages, which this, this is. We just tracked this on Thursday and we actually did this kind of as an experiment more than anything else. So what we did is everything that's tracked here was tracked using the Lewitt Audio 540 Sub-Zero. So what we're doing here, and I won't get into this today because I'm gonna make a different video on this topic, but what we did is we did a lot of weird sound design -y recordings using props, just everyday items, and I'm gonna try to turn these muted tracks here into musical elements. So just kind of trying to take advantage of the microphone, because the microphone's a very low noise microphone. It's supposed to be good for that kind of thing where you're doing a lot of processing. So um, that's what this is. So it's a very, very rough initial stages session. We just have a guitar. I actually just duplicated this guitar track uh, yesterday. Yeah, I think it was yesterday. And then we just have, uh, you know, basic vocals. I did some backing vocals that I may or may not show you guys just to try out the Metatune plugin. That's the only reason why I put these here. I went rogue and I added some backing vocals yesterday. And I might, I'm definitely going to take them out after this, but I, I may or may not test out the Metatune on a bad voice using these vocals because I, I'm not a singer. <laughs> I don't know how to emphasize that enough. I am not a singer. So uh, it might be too embarrassing for me to show you guys, but I might show you guys today. I don't know. We'll find out. So anyway, I'm not a good singer, but Evan's an amazing singer. So this track here, these are her vocals and she's an amazing, an amazing singer, which is part of why I'm really excited to use her stuff as an example a lot recently, right? I'm pumped about, about her voice. She's got a great voice. So I'm not expecting this to need very much tuning at all. I Half the time I don't put any tuning on her voice, to be honest. I like that human aspect of it. I like when things are a little imperfect and I think it goes very well with her style of music. So this will be a great example of using Metatune in a more subtle way. And then maybe we'll try the Metatune on my backing vocals. I might chicken out. I might try doing an extreme tuning on one of these sound design elements instead. Okay. All right. So this is the plugin. I just pulled it open yesterday for the first time. So this is, you know, initial stages of using the plugin and learning about it, but it's not the first time that I've looked at it. So my first impression is it it looks really cool, right? This user interface seems pretty straightforward. It seems like it's pretty easy to use. You know, we have the three basic controls over here that a lot of tuning plugins will have. Uh, we can pick our uh, key that we're in over here. Everything's displayed nicely around here. There's a few different display things that I've noticed so far. And then here's your section for the doubler, which is, is kind of cool. I dug into it a little bit yesterday. I don't know, I just think the user interface looks really nice and it seems pretty simple and straightforward to use. So what I figured out so far about this plugin is that we have the three main controls here. So the speed, the sustain, and the amount. We have our note stabilizing controls over here. We have our heat maps right here left to right here. And that just kind of shows, once I hit play, you'll see what it does, but it shows where the audio is falling in terms of pitch. We have, you know, our keyboard display showing us what key we're in. And then we can actually hit these buttons here for each note to hear the note.
So that's kind of handy. And you can hit that to play the note while you're listening back as well. So that's kind of cool. And then let's see, you can pick the key here. So whatever key you want to be in, you can make it just chromatic as well if you want. You can reset it to chromatic using this button, I believe. Yeah, toggle all notes on, that sets it to chromatic. And then this is the group section, which I honestly, I haven't dug into at all yet, but it does seem like it's a pretty cool feature because what it does is it allows you to assign multiple instances of Metatune into different groups. And then that allows you to change, if you change one of them, it changed all of them. So it lets you do things like key changes across a whole ton of tracks all at once very quickly. So whereas it might take you a lot longer with other plugins to make a key change across multiple tracks, this allows you to do it a little bit faster, a little more streamlined is what it seems like to me. I haven't dug into it. I haven't been using it, but it does seem like a pretty cool feature, especially if you have a really big session. It seems like it just allows you to make it a little more automatic, a little bit faster, a little more streamlined. And then this doubler section is pretty cool. I have been experimenting with this a little bit. It sounds pretty cool. I like the sound of it. I I think this orb is so cool. It's so shiny. I'm such a sucker for this stuff. It's, you know, it's like, it, it's whatever it sounds like. That's what matters, but like the orb's pretty cool. All right, so let's try this plugin. Let me close this. I'm gonna actually bypass it. And you'll notice all I have on the vocals, I have a basic EQ here. I did like a 1K pop to help it pop out in the mix a little bit so far. I did a very simple, you know, opposite thing to the guitar. I, I haven't done a ton to this mix at all. I did create some verb that the vocals are going to and then some of the percussions going to it as well. But that's that's really it. Like we just we just tracked this. That's all I have going so far. So I'm going to bypass Metatune and we're going to just listen to it for a second to get a baseline of what it sounds like. And then we'll mess with Metatune. <laughs> is haunted so I'm happier than most spent a year inside my bedroom but never had to be So that gives you an idea of what the song's like. Let me bring in Metatune, how I have it set right now. I think I had it set pretty subtly. So, um, you know, I tried to I try to make it kind of subtle just because her her voice is so so great by itself. But let's hear. My house is haunted. So I'm happier. Inside my bedroom, but never had to be alone. So you can especially hear it right here, I believe. But never had to be. Let's hear it with and without, because I feel like you can kind of hear the tuning there. Let's see. But never had to be alone. But never had to be. So in this instance, I might make it even less extreme if I was being seriously mixing right now instead of just shooting a video. Uh, let's see if we can bring it down even more. Never had to be alone. Never had to be alone. Never had to be so that's a little better. I like how subtle it can go. There's still room for it to go even more subtle if I want to, right? I like the the heat map here. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but it's been showing where the notes are hitting. It looks really cool and it helps you visualize what's happening here. So that's really cool. And I also noticed that when you hit bypass on this plugin, everything goes red, which is really helpful if you've ever 
been tweaking settings on a plugin and been like, why, why am I not hearing a difference here? It's uh, sometimes it's because it's bypassed. It's happened to the best of us. And this helps you not make that mistake, which is a great feature. I'm surprised more plugins don't have this feature, to be honest. That's pretty helpful. So let's try something more extreme and silly with this, shall we? get really robotic there, huh? Let me uh, make sure I'm not playing the same stuff over and over here. It can get pretty robotic. I, you know, this negative speed thing, I'm not sure I fully understand it, but it's pretty, it's pretty intense. So I stand in double light, making pictures with my hands. There's definitely a big difference between the negative negative speed and the zero. So I stand So I stand in double So I stand in double light Making pictures with my hands To keep us both So the sustain's pretty cool. Let's see. Let's crank up the amount and hear what it sounds so like. I stand in double light, making pictures with my hands to keep us both awake at night. Yeah, so there's definitely more warble. It's it's doing a lot more with the amount higher. That's I mean, it's probably not a surprise to anybody. Uh so let's see. Let's see here. And you'll see how the orb changes as you change these parameters as well, which is pretty cool. So I stand in Let me move farther back in the song here. So we're not listening to the same stuff over and over. Let's listen to, let me bring this down. What did I have this at? See, this is my problem. So let's listen to the doubler. I know it's hard to believe but when we talk about the weather, we never lie to me. I am terrified of dying. Oh, and you can also, where was I? I was over here somewhere almost. You can also adjust this with these parameters if you want. I've, I've kind of gravitated towards the dot here because I kind of like that, but let's see. My house is haunted, so I'm luckier than most. Spent a year inside my bedroom. Cool. 
So that's pretty cool. I, I like the sound of the doubler. It's got like a, a nice shimmery sound to it. So for this note stabilizer, it looks like what it's doing is it's telling the computer not to correct notes shorter than a certain value, depending on where you put it. So there's short, which is less than 40 milliseconds. It's not going to touch. Mid is less than 80 milliseconds and long is less than 200 milliseconds, which is a good amount of time. So that's what this note stabilizer is. So you have to activate it. So if you have it on none, it's not going to do that. And then you pick, you know, how long you want it to be. So let's listen to that, actually. Maybe I'll play this over and over. Mm, let me do a short chunk here. Spend a year inside my bedroom. Let's do that. Spend a year inside my bedroom. 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 So you can really hear the difference there at the end of year, I think. Let me... Spend a year, spend a year, spend a year, spend a year. You can hear the difference there. That's pretty cool. So it allows you to make it feel more or less natural using that, that feature. That's pretty cool. Oh, I think you can also customize the keys here. So let me try that again. Yeah. So you can actually bring notes in or out and change the, the key, so to speak, if you want. So that's kind of cool. Um, you know, depending on what you're doing or what you want, I could see that being useful, especially if you're doing sound design stuff. I could see myself using that feature for sound design stuff a lot. Cool. So I'm, I'm liking it so far, by the way, the, Tuning plugins that I've tried before, I've used Auto-Tune a lot. I've used Melodyne a lot. I've used the Melda free tuner a little bit, not a ton, but just a little bit just to experiment with it and see what it's like. I've, what else have I used? Oh, the Waves one. I've used that one too, a bunch. So I've used a bunch of different tuners before. Tuning isn't my favorite thing on earth necessarily, unless I'm doing it for like an effect, then it becomes a lot more fun to me personally. But, uh, you know, I've, I've used different tuners before. I'm, I'm liking this one. Another thing that I see here that seems like it could be a really cool feature is this pitch reference. So, you know, like Western music, uh, there, there are different tuning systems out there basically, right? So not everything has A being 440 hertz. So depending on what you're working on, you might want to actually change this. And it looks like you can. Yeah, you can actually change it. So that's pretty cool. Cool. So let's maybe look at this on my vocals. Do I want to do this? Do I really want to do this to myself? <sighs> okay, so I have an instance of Metatune. Obviously, I'm going to be more extreme with myself because my singing is junk. Um, I love singing. It's a lot of fun. I'm not being mean to myself. That's just It's just a fact. I just can't sing. It's just a fact. So I have a little bit of EQ here. So I've boosted the highs. I've done a high pass filter here. That's something that I tend to do with backing vocals a lot. So that's just like standard backing vocal stuff. I brought it down a little bit at 1K to help her vocal pop out more compared to mine. Let's see what else did I do here. I have this Haas plug in here to make it like a little bit wider. That's also kind of what I did to the guitar. So I have like a guitar down the middle and then I have like a little Haas effect going on um, just using the delay plug in, not using the Haas plug in, but that's all I've done. Let's see. And then I have the tape plugin by Baby Audio. This one's pretty cool too. I want to dig into this a little more at some point. I've used it a little bit so far. It's actually run by AI, which is pretty interesting. But it just, you know, it's a tape em emulation plugin. So I did that to make it a little bit like dirty and grungier and like a little, a little bit more different from her voice. Yeah. And again, I'm gonna I'm gonna delete this track later. So keep that in mind. All right, let me find a good place to play. That's not too embarrassing. I tried to chicken out and find something else to play. I'm going to play it. I'm just going to play it. So that's it. Okay, so what we can do is we can crank it up. Make it really robotic. Oh, why am I playing this by itself? 
let's listen with her so we can hear how it sounds together. Because, you know, when you're mixing half the time, soloing things can lead you to making decisions that you wouldn't otherwise make because everyone's hearing it as a whole, you know, the sum of the parts. So I'm going to use that as an excuse not to play my backing vocals by itself right now. So let's listen to it. I'm not scared of being dead. I kind of like the dead part on that. That's kind of cool. Um, you know, I'm not sure if we have to play this. I'm not scared of being dead. I'm not scared of being dead. All right. Let's let's bring it back a little bit and see how terrifying it is. I'm not scared of being dead. All right. I'm not scared of being dead. I'm not scared of being dead. All right. I'm going to only play this phrase because that's all I have the courage for. I'm not scared of being dead. I like it a little bit better with some sustain on it. I'm not scared of being dead. Yeah, I think I like it better with the sustain. I could just be sucking myself out though, honestly. I'm not scared of being dead. What's this percentage go down to? Oh, it goes to zero. I was going to say like 50. It's like not 50% of the wheel here. But I guess it's based on the idea that most people want to be around here somewhere. So you have a little more control over these ranges of percentage percentages and then less control over like the tiny bits. Yeah, that's, that makes sense. Yeah. I'm not scared of being dead. Cool. You know, it sounds okay with her voice shining over it. I'm not scared of being dead. Yeah, I kind of don't mind it. Let's make it a lot more doubly. I'm not scared of being dead. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's walk that back. Let's listen with more sustain. I'm not scared of being dead. 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 Cool. Cool. So I really like this plugin so far. I think I'll definitely be using it in the future. So you'll probably see it in some more videos in the future here. But just so you know, I, I've i actually paid for the Slate All Access Pass for years, right? So it's something that I found to be worth it for whatever that's worth. But apparently, if you, if you want, you can get the perpetual license for this plugin if you want just the plugin and you want to just have the perpetual license and not pay any kind of subscription fee. I know a lot of people are very anti-subscription fee, so I just wanted to mention that that is also an option that you have. And also in the description is the link to that giveaway. So again, Produce Like a Pro is giving away three year-long subscriptions to the Slate Digital All Access Pass. So if you want to enter to win that, uh, the link is in the description. And again, this is a collab with my friends at Produce Like a Pro. So thank you so much to Produce Like a Pro. And thank you for Evan for letting me use this example in the video. So check out her music in the description. If you haven't already, we're working on a ton of new stuff. So she'll be having new stuff coming out soon as well. And I think that's about it. I think that's all I wanted to say today. So as always, you know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I'd appreciate all that stuff. I do have a Patreon. So it's patreon.com slash Kato Noise. My patrons get access to additional content. We're all hanging out on a Discord server. I feel like I say this every single time, but it's been a lot of fun hanging out on the Discord server. So check that out if you want to check that out and it does help keep my channel going so thank you so much to my patrons and other than that i come out with new videos every wednesday and thank you for watching okay so if you've seen my previous videos then you might notice that i have a sofa behind me
that was not here before. So I assembled this the other day. I'm really excited about it. It's a pretty cool sofa. It's um, it's made with like recycled materials and stuff. So I wanted to get environmentally friendly options whenever I can. So that's why I chose this one. And I've been really, really happy with it. So uh, my space has opened up a bit because I moved the drum set. I had a drum set there behind the Gik Acoustic panels. So what I did is I moved the panels back. I have the sofa in front of them now. And then the drum set is in front of my whisper room. So it's like between the main entrance to my garage studio building and the whisper room. So it's kind of, it's a little more of an awkward place for the drum set, but it's working. So uh, I'm going to, I'm going to workshop it. I'm pretty excited about the sofa. I think it's, I think it's nice. It's also nice, not just for clients, but for me, like I was listening to something yesterday and I kind of like stepped back and I was laying down on the sofa and kind of relaxing with it. And that was, that was a nice way to uh, do things for a minute. So that was pretty cool. Oh, and my other new exciting thing. <laughs> okay, let me get it. Let me get it. I wonder if my headphones will reach. <laughs> I got, I've never been so excited for a microphone. I got two Coles 4038s. They're a matched pair. They're my twins. I'm like so excited about these these are some of my favorite microphones ever but they're so expensive that it's just been years of me loving these microphones and not buying them because they're so expensive and I finally got some I can't believe it okay so what that means is I'm gonna I'm gonna go play with these instead of doing a big outro I hope that's okay Okay, bye guys. <laughs>